topics today I want to speak a little bit about uh, how to keep your computer cool, uh, PC cooling systems. Uh, here this is my old Haswell platform with 16 gigabytes of RAM and uh, Haswell i5 and you see the big uh, aftermarket cooler that I added, the Freezer 13. It's a very well-known cooler. It's pretty much a classic. So this was the original boxed cooler provided by Intel. And what happened in summer, if you have the CPU on the full load, the system started to shut off because it was simply overheating. So the original box cooler was inadequate. So that's why I replaced it with the Freezer 13. Now with the Freezer 13, it was at least 15 to 20 degrees cooler. And in idle, the system was, there was no noise at all. So that was big improvement. And I tried to do the same improvement today with my new Ryzen system. So this is my new Ryzen 3600 system with 32 gigabytes of RAM and the AMD stock cooler, which doesn't look so bad at first, but it surely can't compete with this hunky chunky. So the problem with the stock cooler is, as you can see in the graphics, it gets very hot, uh, even in idle or just like with desktop operation, it's between 50 and 60 degrees. If you do something like Prime 95, it goes easily up to 94, 95 degrees after only five or six minutes. So I hope to improve that greatly with the new cooler. And I also hope to have a lot less noise because the noise with this cooler, this cooler always goes up and down, speeds up, speeds down. Uh, it's horrible. It's horrible noise uh, because I'm used to a totally silent system. So let's see what we can do about it. So removing the stock cooler, just unplug the fan and then loosen those four screws here and then rotate the cooler a little bit and then you pop it off. So you have the thermal compound on here. So now you need to clean that whole area of course before you add the new fan. I encountered a slight problem when I removed the old CPU cooler. I heard this thing falling down on the back of the main board. So this plate is right behind the CPU and it is supposed to be held on or holding on by those two plastic parts that I remember I got them with the main board and didn't know what to do with those parts they seemed kind of redundant but they're not redundant at all if you want want to mount anything else but the stock cooler to the CPU you obviously need those two plastic parts so that an uh, aftermarket cooler like this one can hold on to those plastic parts. It's quite interesting, good to know. Didn't find anything about that in the descriptions. So everything is ready now for the new fan to be installed. I have those plastic latches north and south of the CPU. The actual latches for the fan to mount are on the outside. So the CPU is cleaned of the old thermal compound. So everything is ready to go. I also prepared the heatsink itself. So let's see what everything fits. This plastic part is actually for Intel CPUs. For AMD CPUs, you just need to install these little hooks or holders on the cooling system. So now we have to do everything correctly because I don't have any spare thermal compound and I wouldn't want to redo everything again. Okay. 
in order to get those latches correctly in position, you need to let them as loose as possible. So don't fasten them at all before you put the heat sinking unit on. And then carefully fasten each of the latches one by one. This is the finished product, the Freezer Extreme. And I also added another fan here. I had a fan here, but this is a little bit of better one. And I also configured it or connected it as System Fan 1. So now the mainboard has direct control over this fan. Now before I close up the housing, I want to make sure that all the fans uh, blow in the correct direction. So let me check that out. Let's check the direction of the airflow. I think I had this wrong in the wrong this one in the wrong direction. So the logo needs to be like that. So seems right. Seems right. Seems also right. So the airflow is correct. Now we can close the baby up and do some temperature testing. Alright folks, these are the test results. The CPU temperature in idle is pretty much most of the time now between 40 and 50 degrees Celsius. Here on the screen you see the 66, I'm already starting prime 95. The temperature in the CPU rises fast but only till about 70 to 76 degrees max. So after running um, uh, Prime 95 for six minutes, I had 72 degrees. Uh, with the stock cooler, AMD cooler, I reached 92, 94, 95. So these are already dangerous waters for a CPU. It's definitely not something that you should, should run it under permanently. So you see a big jump in cooling performance with the Arctic Freezer Extreme. Now the Arctic Freezer Extreme is not the most powerful air cooling system. You can get better ones or with more cooling performance. However, it is extremely silent with its 120 millimeter fan. That's why I picked it. Yeah, my system is totally silent now in idle on desktop. Uh, I can't hear anything literally. Uh, even on the load, it's very tolerable. The CPU fan after running the Prime 95 for a few minutes is chilling at about 1,100 rounds per minute. So there are still reserves. It can cool much better, has more uh, cooling performance to offer. Now this is my experience with the stock coolers. They overheat or they are not really capable to cool these CPUs under adverse conditions like for example in summer for example if your CPU and your graphics processing unit processing unit have to work very hard then these units are just not enough you can easily have a heat shutdown uh, during the warmer time of the year so these units are loud they are very underpowered you should really get rid of your stock cooler this is a uh, cheap upgrade that you can do you to your PC if you're rendering for your YouTube channel or if you do other stuff that has a high load on the CPU or GPU. Now this upgrade is pretty easy to do uh, as you saw it can come with some surprises uh, so make sure you have the necessary parts beforehand make sure you buy the fitting parts then everything should go okay, take your time, have a good light source, uh, make sure there is no static electricity in the way, so just touch your, uh, touch your heating system or something that has a connection to the ground. So get rid of static electricity and take your time, uh, don't apply too much force. This is an upgrade that you can easily do, even I with my rather shaky hands can handle that. So it's not a big problem, but it makes a big difference. Heavily reduced noise levels and greatly improved cooling performance, as you can see on the screen. So this was a little bit of a different video today. 
and hope you can still benefit from it because indoor and outdoors go hand in hand sometimes. So this was wear and tear over and out.